Do you want to learn how to solve complex problems using an elegant and concise code and also make it easy to test? Functional programming may help. Let's start with an introduction on what functional programming is. Functional programming is mainly based on three concepts. Function, our first class citizen, minimize the side effects and the immutability. In functional programming, functions are treated as first-class citizen, which means they can be assigned to variable, passed as arguments to other functions, and returned as value from functions. For example, in Lisp we can create a function on the fly using lambda, we can assign it to a variable, and then calling it later on. This may seem a simple concept, but it brings a lot of power, because it makes convenient the usage of functions like mapcar, remove if, and so on. Then we have side effects. A function is said to have a side effect if it modifies some variable outside its local environment. For example, we can declare a global counter and then define a function that modifies it. For example, in this case, we want to have a function counter that every time that is called, it returns a different number. The easiest way to implement it is start from zero, and every time that I return a number, I increment a counter variable. Side effects are everywhere. For example, printing on screen is a side effect. The idea is to use side effects only in a controlled way. Then we have immutability. Instead of variable, one should use constant whenever it is possible. It may seem limiting. How can I do a for loop? You can't. One get loops using recursion. For example, here we have two different implementations of a function print list that print the element of a list, one per line. In the first case, we use directly the do list form, while in the second one, we get the loop using recursion. If it is not a cons, for example, if it is nil, I do nothing. Otherwise, I print the current element and then I continue the recursion on the rest of the list. A functional programming language is really strict in applying the previous features. Examples of functional programming languages are Haskell, Clojure, and so on. Is Common Lisp a functional programming language? In general, it is not. We have classes and object. We have the do macro to create loops. Using setf, we can change whatever we want. For example, even strings that are immutable in most modern programming languages in common Lisp are mutable. We can define a variable greetings and change one of its characters. Common Lisp is a multi-paradigm language. We can do object-oriented programming, metaprogramming, functional programming, and so on. To write functional code in common Lisp, one has to limit himself in using only the part of the language that respect the feature we described before. I would say that this style of programming is quite common in Common Lisp, but nevertheless, the language does not limit yourself. If you think that a specific problem can be solved more expressively using object-oriented programming, you can do it. What are the advantages of functional programming? In the last few years, a lot of languages started to implement functional programming features because a functional style makes it really easy to write a program in a concurrent and parallel world because it minimizes the shared state. Mutexes are often not required. Functional programs are easier to test because the result of a function depends only on its parameters. A functional program takes advantage of function composition. Complex problems are solved using well-known and tested functions. So, to sum up, why are Lisps often linked to functional programming? Lisp is not a language. 
it's a family of languages with similar features. Common Lisp is the language of this family. The math function and the idea of combining elements of list using simple function, which is really common in modern functional programming languages, was first introduced in a Lisp language. In particular, this is true for Common Lisp. We have mapcar, readus, remove if, and so on. All those functions do not change the list they get as input. They create a new one. For example, we can define a list L1. Then we define the list L2 using the function remove if that removes all even numbers. We can see that L1 hasn't changed, while L2 contains only the odds number that were inside L1. Often, if we know we want to use a variable again, we can use destructive functions, which are faster. For example, this is the difference between reverse and unreverse. If we reverse the function L1 and then we print L1, we can see that it hasn't changed. While if we use and reverse, we lost the content of L1. For today, this is all. Let me know in the comments if you liked the video, leave a like and subscribe.